Thanks. So we'll start with uh, the online forums menu. So you should have a, should already have this uh, installed if you haven't already from the App Store. So we'll start with the form packet, which is basically a scenario for which you want to record information. So this can be re-enrollment, new student applications, it can be uh, buying tickets, it can be just, just about anything. Uh, because we do support online forms, uh, so we do support online payments. So let's do re-registration of students. So there's my re-registration of students form packet. I can put in some descriptions, instructions, and so on. Uh, and then here I can decide if I want to show this form within uh, one of our existing portals. You could say add it for all parents. Uh, and if you wanted it, one of the forms to be available publicly through a public URL, you can definitely use this here. So there's a form here, or you can use a code snippet. Um, so I'll, I'll just disable that for now. Um, so the next part is to actually add forms. So there are a couple of ways of doing it. You can create a new form. So this is a manually created form. Let's say student information. Configure that so you can add a number of forms, uh, a number of fields. Uh, so let's say student name, for example, maybe student birth date, and this can be a date field, mm -hmm. uh, and so on, right? So you can add as much information as you want. You can even create sections. So, for example, I could create here add information, this can be a header. And maybe father's name as a text, and maybe father's uh, phone number. Phone number, right? Save that, and you'll notice in the lower right corner we have this thing called configure form. So this allows you to map those custom fields with system fields. So I can look for a student name right here, student birth date right there, maybe a parent one name, parent one home phone, right? And um, basically when you map the fields, uh, when you enroll the student, uh, you can actually uh, copy this information into the student record. All right. A couple of things here to note: uh, required, obviously, if you want the, uh, the uh, submitter to, if you want to force them to fill in those fields, set it as required, and then the validate. I usually just keep it unchecked. This is a way to make sure some fields were entered properly, like for emails and so on. Let's go ahead and save that. Save that again. Close. Oh, one more thing I want to mention here is we do have this ability to make forms mandatory or optional. So when you make a form optional, uh, what happens is uh, they can access the form, and if they fit in the form, all the fields within the form will be mandatory, but they can essentially opt out and say, I don't want to fill in this form. So for example, I could say optional. Uh, I uh, have read the form and agree to not participate, as an example. Oh, OK. OK. Uh, so there'll be a checkbox, and then they can select the box, and then the form becomes uh, not submitted, basically. I'll give this mandatory for right now. Um, so yeah, so you could have as many forms as you want within, that, uh, within this form packet, and you can also upload fillable PDF forms. Uh, let's see if I can have some examples. Um, so with fillable PDF forms, it will actually pick up forms, uh, the uh, fields from your form, so you don't have to create those forms manually. And then you can just go right into cre uh, mapping fields from your form into system fields. And when you create the fillable PDF form, obviously it makes sense to name those form the fields, uh, you know, descriptively, so you know what what those fields are. 
uh, and then you can make certain fields um, required or not required. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's make this one optional so you can see what this looks like. Uh, I have read the form and um, will not be submitting. Let's save, close. All right. Let's look at a few other things uh, here. We have supporting documents. So these are any uh, files you want to include that are informational that uh, the parents will not necessarily submit. Uh, we've got a workflow section so you can uh, create additional steps. You can always make changes to this later if you decide you need additional steps anyway. And now comes to the advanced settings. So regular forms, basically if it's you know like a survey, if you have someone can submit the form multiple times, then the regular form is the way to go. Anytime you want to move information from your forms into the student record, you'll need this thing called enrollment or registration form. So this includes if you're updating uh, student records uh, for either re-enrollment or you know, if you want to update the emergency contact information, you should have this selected. Mm -hmm. A couple more things here yeah. allows users to submit only one, only uh, one form. Allow users to submit form only if all required fields are filled. So you usually want to keep this checked. So that way if they miss something, they can't uh, just submit form. And here, if you um, have forms that are specific to a grade level. So maybe you may have, you know, you have some forms or registration packet where the seniors may have a different form than the juniors. So you can select this and then there'll be some options for you to set uh, what grade levels apply to which forms. This should be fairly obvious when you turn it on. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, and if you want to make different forms av available for different tags, I've never really used this myself, but you could, in essence, create forms for uh, people with allergies or forms for uh, people with uh, specific uh, conditions, I guess. But you do have to tag these students appropriately in your, in your database before you do this. Uh, so these would apply to um, uh, when you turn on the forms for existing users. It doesn't really apply if you are uh, using a public form where you don't really know what the student's grade level is other than what they tell you. Um, so yeah, you, you have this option there. Multi-step configuration is just a way for you to kind of group uh, forms into different folders, I guess you could say. So when you have a single step, you have all the forms in one big chunk, giant chunk. Uh, if you wanted to have like a, a step one, step two, step three, step one has five forms, step two has six forms, step three has two forms, that's one way of doing it. Uh, that's completely just, uh, just for convenience. And this one here, one form per child, is if uh, when the parent logs in, they may have three children. Uh, but they want you. They, you want them to submit a form for each child, as opposed to one for the whole family. Uh, so this is quite handy. Quite handy to keep turned on for the parent portal. Email templates are pretty straightforward. You can create multiple email templates. Say thank you. Uh, use the uh, insert field section. So you it will allow you to use any of the fields that uh, have been mapped. Uh, so you can use the student's name, uh, the parent's name, because I would recreate those four fields. And of course, there's the submitter email that you can use as well. Uh, so let's try something here, student name. If you don't get the submitter email from the parent portal, would you need a field to enter it? Um, like, <laughs> it's going to be based on the login. So yeah, okay. if someone didn't log in, then you would be able to use that field, in which case you should create a form uh, for the submitter's email address and then use that uh, in your email template. Okay, sounds good. Right. So for emails, insert the email and you got, you got to copy the email manually into the to field because the insert field doesn't work uh, in the to field. It only inserts into this main body but you can use those tags in the to section as well. All right. Subject. Let's save. So you can create multiple templates to be used as you go. All right. We've also got uh, 
email notifications, so you can send out notifications when an email is when a, when a form is uh, submitted. So just fill in what should be in the uh, submission in the uh, notification email, and you can of course uh, copy or blind copy yourself so that you know when someone fills in the form, and you can add whatever information in the email body as needed. And this one, of course, uh, shows you the history of what's been sent. So you, if, you, if you opt not to, sh to include yourself in the email notification that gets sent out, you can at least, at least see what has been sent through this history section. Sure. So the notification goes out automatically, the email, you would go in at some point and say, I'm going to send that? Uh, the notification is when someone submits the form. Yeah. Right. What was the okay. question? And then the email template, you go and decide to submit at some point, like it's an enrollment step or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So the email templates are for when you're actually processing the forms of the okay. submissions. And then you can decide, right, so this person's missing information, I want to use this template. Or this person is ready for the next stage, I want to use that, that template. So you can set up all those templates in advance, uh, and it'll automatically pick up uh, all the, you know, the, the submitter's name, whatever information is empty, you can... Um, add that logic a little bit into the uh, forms, into the uh, templates. Got it. Thanks. All right. A couple more things here. Collect fees. So you can actually collect fees, online payments, via the admission, via the uh, submission process. You will need to turn on um, the Stripe integration uh, on your fees tracking module. Uh, or if you just want to integrate with uh, fees in general, you can actually just create fee tracking transactions, uh, you know, into your uh, fee tracking account uh, when they when you approve or when they submit the uh, forms. So again, this isn't, this doesn't really apply for new students. This will apply for existing students. Mm -hmm. All right. And when you turn one of these on, uh, it turns on the section up on top. Let's see where is it? Right here. Please indicate uh, what in, uh, what you'd like to pay for. You could add a fee. So this can be maybe registration fee, fifty dollars, uh, one, and then you can say if if the you know if you if you're selling T-shirts or tickets, maybe the, then you can allow the, the uh, parent to indicate how many. Otherwise, if you leave it unchecked, it's always going to be one, and maybe I'll make it a mandatory fee so they actually have to purchase that when they submit the form. All right. Uh, the last one here is SIS integration. So we do have the ability, if you just want to use Quick Schools as an online form and not use our SIS, you can actually integrate our online forms with other SIS, other sy uh, systems out there. Uh, so this has to be configured by us, and then we can use this to turn it on once it's been configured on our end. Good. Right. Save that. Uh, let's let's actually publish it. Let's see what it looks like. So here we're logging as a parent. So I've got two students, and here is our new form: re-registration of students. And I've got uh, Amber Phillips, which is this guy, and First Try, which is this guy. I click on one of these students. I've got my form packet. So remember, there's two forms in my form packet. Uh, there's my student information form. Open this form and fill in my information. Amber Phillips. I'll put in some bogus date. Um, as Roy. Five 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 one two three four safe. Close. So it marks these as 100% complete because I filled in all the required forms. I didn't put any, any uh, required fields for this form, so it always shows 100% complete. Uh, and then here's where it shows me the checkbox. We're actually going to move this. It's not going to appear here anymore. So if you, you, you're going to move this such that it looks exactly the same, and then when you click Open Form, uh, the checkbox will be up on top. And then here you can uh, say, I don't want to. Um, you know, submit this form. 
I'm gonna go ahead and submit it. Submit. Uh, oh, and I guess I turned off the right. So uh, if I go back to my forms, here's my submission. One submission for today. I can view my submissions, and you'll notice it has you know the student's name and everything in here. Uh, there are a couple of ways for you to uh, process these. You can click on them individually. Look at the uh, information about this, the uh, submission. I can enroll the student, which means I'll move copy the information forward. I can also you know, look at in the, in the actual fields inside. Uh, I can also do a block processing. So this one opens up all the forms in sequence. And the thing about this form is I can actually quickly move uh, in between forms with this older and newer links on the left and right. And I can very quickly uh, change the status of the form, whether I want to enroll the student or change the status. And the nice thing here is a discussion section. So if you have multiple people working on the same set of forms, you can actually write notes about the forms and, and discuss uh, what to do with that particular submission. So far, so good? Yeah, so far, so good. Okay. So there is an export functionality here. I've actually never used this. Uh, just save that. See what it looks like. All right. So it's got all the fields that you can that were that are in the form. That's a lot of fields. It's all flattened. And so if you wanted to do a simple import into another system, obviously you can just export the Excel file and then import it to the other system. Uh, and that is pretty much it. Uh, we do offer reporting if you have the report creator available. Um, you can select online forms right here. And then select, you, you do have to select the form packet. This is required. So once you select the form packet, then you are you are able to access uh, the specific fields from inside uh, the form packet. So maybe I just want a student name, father's name. I don't need anything from here. So optional anyway. Maybe I'll add the submission number and status. Done. And this is my form. Uh, 